Today's topic is Sanger's method of DNA sequencing. What is sequencing? Sequencing is a process of determining the order of nucleotide bases in any DNA fragment. Although there are many methods available for sequencing, but the most widely used technique is Sanger's sequencing. It is also known as chain termination method and dideoxy method. Why this method is given these names, we'll discuss it later. This technique was developed by British biochemist Frederick Sanger and his team in 1977. He was a great scientist and I would like to mention here that he was conferred Nobel Prize twice. Another important feature of this technique is that it involves the DNA synthesis. These days, the computerized automated sequencing technique is mostly used, but the principle used in the automated sequencing is also based on Sanger's method. Although, in this video, we'll discuss the classical method of Sanger. Here, you can see different forms of ribose sugar. Ribose is a pentose sugar or 5 carbon sugar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These 5 carbon positions are shown here. At second and third carbon positions, hydroxyl groups are attached. This sugar form is found in RNA molecule. Deoxyribose sugar, which you can see here, is almost like a ribose sugar except that one hydroxyl group at second carbon position is missing. Instead of OH, only H is present here. The oxygen has been removed, hence we call it deoxy. But at third prime position, the hydroxyl group is intact, which is actually very important because the phosphate group of another nucleotide is attached here at this point. In nature, it is found in DNA molecule. The third form, which you call as dideoxyribose, is not found in any biomolecule in nature, but it was modified and very cleverly used by Sanger in his method to find out the sequence. The unique thing about it is that it doesn't have OH group either at 2 prime or 3 prime carbon position. So the result is that the phosphate of another nucleotide cannot form a bond and it cannot be attached. Because we are using this dideoxy form, that's why this method is also known as dideoxy method. Here you can see the diagram of a nucleotide which is having a deoxyribose sugar. At first carbon position, a base is attached. It can be either A, adenine or T, thiamine or G, guanine and C, cytosine. And at 5 prime position, phosphate group is attached. So this structure is called as dinucleoside triphosphate, but it is commonly known as DNTP. This DNTP is the normal nucleotide which is present in DNA molecule. Here, N can be replaced by DATP, DTTP, DGTP or DCTP. Now, we'll discuss the polynucleotide chain elongation and chain termination due to insertion of DTNTP. Let's see how the chain is elongated. This is the normal DNTP which has a OH group. Second DNTP is added to it during DNA synthesis and its phosphate group is attached to OH group of first nucleotide and phosphodiester bond is formed. Similarly, next nucleotide is also attached but now you see instead of normal DNTP DDNTP is added. This DDNTP can be attached easily no problem because it has a phosphate group and the earlier one uh, the third DNTP has the OH group so the bond can be formed. But what will be the problem? The problem will be after its attachment, after the attachment of DT and TP in the chain, when the next nucleotide will come and it will try to add in the chain, then you see it will not be able to attach. Why? Because the OH group.
group is missing. See, DDNTP doesn't have any OH group at 3' end. So in the, the next uh, NTP, the normal DNTP, it will not be able to get attached to this. And the result will be that the chain will be terminated. So that is why this is known as chain termination method also. Now, let us discuss the procedure. Here is the double-stranded DNA sample which has to be converted into single-stranded DNA. Once you have enough amount of single-stranded DNA, divide it into four parts and put it into four tubes. Now we'll see what are the components or say prerequisites for DNA synthesis. First of all, the single-stranded DNA will be needed which will act as a template on which the complementary bases will be attached. Then a primer is required. Primer is a short nucleotide sequence which is uh, single-stranded and it can be designed and synthesized. Here in this case the label primer is used. It can be fluorescently labeled or it can be radioactively labeled. Uh, the primer is must for the initiation of synthesis because the DNA synthesis cannot start by its own. Uh, the primer provides a kind of substrate for the DNA polymerase to work on and to add the nucleotide. So here you can see that the primer is attached to this part and uh, at the 3' end the OH group is free and uh, the nucleotide will get attached to it. Uh, then another uh, component which is required is DNA polymerase. This is an enzyme which catalyzes the reaction. Uh, then we'll also need four different DNTPs, means the DATP, DTTP, DGTP and DCTP. And these will be required in large amount. And very small amount of DDNTP is also required. All these components will be needed in all the four tubes, but uh, this DDNTP will be needed one type of DDNTP in each tube, and that's how we'll know that what in which tube which DDNTP is there. In this diagram, you can see we have taken four tubes, and in all the four tubes, all the components of DNA synthesis have been added, including the single stranded DNA. And here suppose we say that in single stranded DNA sequence is you know ATGC, ATGC. Here I have taken very simple uh, nucleotide sequence but uh, you can take any nucleotide sequence randomly you can write anything here. In all these tubes the DDNTPs have been added here in the first tube DDATP was added, DDGTP in the second tube, DDCTP and DDTTP was added here. Now we'll see how the DNA synthesis starts and how the chain termination takes place. In the first tube we had added DDATP that means the addition of A will be there when the synthesis is taking place. Let us see where A can be added. A can be added wherever in the template there is T. So T is present here and T is present here. So at both these points the A can be added. Now you see here. After T, the second nucleotide added was DDATP. So the result is after that, new nucleotide will not be able to add and the chain will be terminated here. And this fragment will be around 2 nucleotide long. In the second case, you see, the at this point, the normal DNTP was added, but at this point, DDNTP was added and the chain was terminated afterwards. So you will you will get two different type of fragments here. Uh, one was two nucleotide long and the other was six nucleotide long. In the second tube we added DDGTP. So this G will be added. Now let us see where the G is pos it can be added. G will be added where there is C. So there are two times C. So it can be added at these two positions. So here you see TACG. As soon as the DTGTP was added, the chain was terminated. In this case, the G was added at the end. So 
you get the fragments which are 4 nucleotide long and 8 nucleotide long. Similarly, in the third tube also, you get the fragments 3 nucleotide long and 7 nucleotide long. And in the fourth tube also, uh, one fragment you will get just one nucleotide long because uh, uh, the first nucleotide which was added was DT, DTP. So after that, the uh, chain was terminated and the second one was the 5 nucleotide long. So that's how, uh, because of the random addition of DT and TPs, all possible lengths of DNA fragments are generated here. Then once you have got all these fragments in four different tubes, then what we have to do, we have to do the electrophoresis and then afterwards we will do the autoradiography to visualize the bands and then we will do the interpretation of bands and so we will get the sequence at the end. Next step is to do the electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis, as you know, is a lab technique used to separate the RNA, DNA, etc. Uh, of course, protein also according to their molecular weight or size. The molecules are separated by an electrical field that you all must be knowing. Shorter molecules having low molecular weight will move faster so they will of course migrate to the long distances as compared to the high molecular weight molecules which will travel slowly. Uh, thus the smallest molecules will be detected towards the bottom and the highest molecular weight molecules will be somewhere near the well. In this method, we will use four wells to load the products of four tubes in which the reactions were taking place. The first lane is showing the product of the tube in which DT ATP was added. The product of the tube in which DT CTP was added has been loaded in this well corresponding to second lane. DDGTP and DDTTP in third and fourth lanes are visible. The sequence of the loading of the product in wells may be any. You know, you need not follow this pattern. After the electrophoresis is complete, the molecule can be stained, stained to make them visible and autoradiography is done. And yeah, Instead of labeling the primer in the beginning, the DT and TPs can also be labeled as, uh, as it is done in automated sequencing. Now we will see how the DNA bands present in different lanes are read. We will read the band from bottom to top because the smallest band is going to be found at the bottom. Let us see where is the first band. It is right here in the lane where DT TTP was added. That means the last nucleotide which was added was T. After, after which the chain must have terminated. So we will write T here. This is the sequence of newly synthesized DNA from 5 prime end. Let us see where is the second band from the bottom. Here it is in the first lane having terminal DT and TP as A. So it can be identified as A because here DT ATP must be the last addition in the polynucleotide chain and after that the chain uh, would have been terminated. The next band appears in the C reaction lane hence can be detected as C. That's how all the bands will be detected and the sequence can be read as uh, T A C G T A C G for from 5 prime to 3 prime and but here one thing is to be remembered and that this is the sequence of newly synthesized DNA and not of the sample Therefore, if you want to know the sequence of the sample, then find out the complementary sequence. See, it's quite easy. So, from 3 prime and it is going to be read as ATGC, ATGC. So, that's all about the procedure. 
Sanger sequencing is considered as quite accurate but only short segments of about 300 to 1000 base pairs can be sequenced by it so that is the limitation. Uh, this whole sequencing has become uh, quite simplified now. These days chain termination kits are available in the market. Commercially they are available. Although many advanced and next generation methods are available, but this method is still in use in labs. So thank you so much. I hope you could understand the Sanger's method.